we are joined by Austin FC midfielder Ethan Finley. Please uh, utilize the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question and you should all have the ability to record. So with no further ado, we'll get started. Um, Eric Goodman from the Austin Chronicle, why don't you go ahead and kick us off? Thanks, Ryan. Hey, Ethan, good to talk to you again. Um, just wondering, you know, you, you you came to this team in the off season after you know an expansion season. They they didn't play very well, or they didn't they didn't get you know competitive results to the point of you know being competitive for the playoffs. At what point, if if ever, did you realize that that maybe this team you know was better than its record showed last year? Well, I think I saw it firsthand. Um, you know, April of last year when. They came to Minnesota and, and whooped on, whooped up on us pretty good. So, um, you know, I, you could see the quality in the players individually, um, and know the results didn't quite maybe go their way. Um, but they had spurts the start of the season, starting well, um, getting some road victories, like I just mentioned. Uh, and then obviously I think the way that this team finished the last month of the season played tough, you know, knew they were out of the playoffs, but continued to play, uh, you know, for the staff and they continue to play for, for the fans. And, and when you see that, you know, that there's something there culturally um, that's a little bit different. It's not a team that just quit on each other um, and quit on the, on the fans. So, you know, that plus, you know, I, I knew some of the people here, I had some firsthand knowledge. Uh, I had some, some friends who were, you know, in this organization and uh, you know, I've, I know some of the staff, I, you know, even people like Dave Tenney and Aki are, are well known in the, in the soccer community as being some of the best, at what they do. Um, and when you get to at my point in my career, I thought, you know, I want to be somewhere where uh, obviously I think I can win, which I, I truly believe that we can. And um, <clears throat> and somewhere where they're doing everything at the, at the highest level, uh, complete professionalism. Um, and I think that that's what, what Austin is, is doing and will continue to strive to do. Chris Bills from the striker. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Hi, Ethan. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about how you were part of a couple of teams in Columbus and Minnesota that went from near the bottom of their conferences and, you know, made some some really good runs. Are there any parallels that you can draw uh, to this preseason, how this team's kind of come together and sort of those intangible things that, that you guys had, um, you know, certainly in Columbus um, and kind of the role that you feel like you can play in, in helping to, to kind of bring a group, a group together that way? Yeah, so what I think you really, you know, you need a mix of, of experienced players, um, and that's internationally as well as domestically. I think, you know, so we've talked about some of the, the, the pieces that we've added this season. I think that addressed that. Um, we have youth. You know, this is a very young team. If you look at it, the guys that are, uh, you know, guys like Pepe, um, you know, he's a young player, still young in his career. Kip, still, you know, very young player. Um, you know, even go down to, to Owen, right, a 17-year-old that, that I think is a really – quality player and is pushing, you know, first team players and he's 17 years old. So I can go on and on about that. Um, and then I, I think, you know, we have a clear identity. Uh, those teams had an identity. They had a style of play they wanted to play um, and we were going to stick to it, whether we were winning a game, whether we were losing a game, whether we're on the road or whether we're at home. I think when you have an identity, everybody knows what's what their job is, what their role is and their responsibilities. And I think it makes it easy. Uh, it, it, you know, when things don't go well, there's no finger pointing because, you know, Guys know in the room, coaches know, we know, you know, that we failed and we know where we need to get better. Um, and when things are good, you just stick to it. You stick to what we're doing. You keep hammering away at it and you try to perfect it. Um, and I think that that's a similar identity and similar culture that we're trying to create here that, you know, I, I experienced, you know, in some of those really good teams that I played with in Columbus. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the competition in this group, too. And obviously, you know, you're fighting for that spot with, with Diego, who's, you know, a fan favorite and has obviously performed well to start this season. How much, you know, what's your relationship like with him? What's it like for you at this point in your career to be sort of fighting to get in, in a lineup? And how much are you kind of looking your chops the way that these teams are, or these guys are wearing teams down? You came in against Miami and, you know, kind of wreaked havoc on it. Uh, how do you kind of feel about that, whether it's yeah. a super sub role or just the competition? Yeah, I mean, I, I hate the term super sub. I'll just be honest with you, um, whether it's me or you're talking about anybody else. Um, you know, it's just not not for me. But, uh, I, you know, there's 11 guys that can start every week. And my job is to make it hard on 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 Josh and the staff to make those decisions. And I'll continue to do so. And and, um, you know, that's how our team gets better. And there's competition all over. You, you know, you know, you mentioned me and Diego, but 
But they were playing on the left, and you know, Cecilio was feeling that, and you saw his response in that and and how he came out and performed in the very first game, right? So you know, we're we're all pushing each other. Um Rodney's right in there. I mean, you know, that's just one position. You look at the defensive midfield position, you know, you you we went and got a really great player in, in Valencia. You know, he's gonna continue to push Pepe. I think it's only two games in, but I've seen some of the best stuff out of Pepe. And you know, I wasn't here all last year, but you know, I've heard that from firsthand knowledge. So this is important. Same thing in center back. I mean, Julio Cascante has been as solid, you know, as we could have asked uh, over two games. And, you know, center back was a position that was, you know, somewhere we needed to address in the off season and the club did. And look at the response from a guy who, you know, maybe didn't have his best season last year and he's been rock solid for us. So um, that's what you need. Um, and, you know, individuals will strengthen this collective and, uh, you know, I don't like to think of it too much. This is the 11 guys that are going out there. We're all preparing each other for the weekend. And um, and that includes 20 plus guys trying to push for, you know, trying to get in just to the 20 man roster. I mean, that, that's every week. That's what's happening. Guys are trying to compete to to go on a trip this weekend. And you need that kind of mentality to uh, to be a championship team. Thank you, Chris. Let's go to Zach Smith. And then after Zach, go ahead, Eric Goodman. Zach. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the familiarity with some of the guys here and uh, obviously Josh Wolf. And I'm just curious now, now that you've been in the system for a preseason and a couple games, how quickly did you, were you able to kind of learn the details of that and kind of get to a point where you feel like you can contribute in a meaningful way like you have? Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly think I'm still learning. Um, there's some adjustments of, of, you know, how Josh is, um, wanting to play that are a little bit different than I had experienced, you know, when I was with him six years ago. Uh, so that that's an adjustment that I'm still continuing to make. And even guys who were here last year are making, because we've made some adjustments to, to our formation and, and, you know, uh, I guess our style of play at times offensively and defensively. So without giving up too much, I'm still making adjustments and, and, you know, that will evolve for me over time. I hope my experience and understanding of, you know, how Josh coaches and, and, and how Nolan and, and Davey and, and, and Rodrigo coach, um, and that relationship will get better so that, you know, I, I can adjust quicker, um, you know, week to week. And then, uh, Ethan, you're know, kind of building off what, what Zach was asking you, you are, you know, you were so familiar, um, with Josh now, you know, experiencing, you know, playing under him as a head coach, how is he different than maybe you remembered or, 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 you know, remember playing for him six years ago, uh, in Columbus? Yeah, well, your relationship's a little bit different, right? He's the head coach. Um, you know, it's not quite as buddy buddy maybe as you would be with an assistant coach. It's just just natural. Um, there's those those boundaries and those barriers. But um, you know, I think he's evolved. I think he's learned a lot about himself, even you know, year one uh, as a as a head coach and going into year two. Um, but he's got great poise, um, and I think you know he he can command the room when he needs to, and he also has that ability to empower his coaches that um, you know you don't always see, but it's good because you need a lot of different voices. It's a lot of guys to talk to. It's a lot of guys to manage, and I think he does a really good job. I think we have a very good staff to you know to be able to manage guys on and off the field, and and that will continue to be challenging uh, throughout the season because you know uh, as Chris kind of pointed, you know I'm a guy right now who you know I've started you know, a lot of games in my career and I want to be starting and, uh, you know, I'm going to be in that office pushing and, and asking how I can and what I can do. And, and a lot of it, he's going to say the same thing. It's, it's, you, you earn your job Monday through Friday out on the field. Um, and that goes for me and that goes for just about every guy out there, including the guys that currently, you know, are, are starting in those spots. They, the team has, I mean, for nobody's a secret that the team has been playing really, really good this couple of home games. Um, how do you feel about their confidence going into the road with a team that has a little bit more of a skill to win in the house? Um, I think it's great. It's a great test. I think the, the players do have confidence. I think these performances is, is, have put our players in um, a position where they, they feel pretty good about what we've been doing and what we've been working on in preseason. And, and um, bringing those into the games. Um, we, we certainly know who the opponent is. We're aware that they're, you know, a, a very good team and very good at their at their home stadium. And, um, you know, 
them and Seattle have, have played, you know, for the last six championships out of the West, the two best teams in the West. I think that's that's the first thing that we know about this opponent. They're 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 a lot of quality um, individually and collectively, and they're well coached. So uh, we'll go there. We'll have our hands full with certain things, but we also want to go there and give them problems. Thank you, Laura. Let's go to Dennis De La Pena. Dennis. Yeah, along those lines, Coach. How how good does experience travel? Because this is such a different makeup, this team, as opposed to last year. How, how well does experience travel? Um, I think it it pays off. I think we, we've seen inside our group, inside our training environment, inside our games, um, the experience, the players that have, have been in this league and, and, and been part of this league have, have performed quite well. And, and again, the guys that came to us last year from different countries and different leagues have adapted well. It takes a little bit of time. I think year two is is typically going to give a bit of a boost in that in that area. And, um, you know, the players have been receptive. One, they've been working hard and and have looked forward to these opportunities. And, and again, we've had two good performances to build on. There's plenty to work on and we'll continue to do that. And, and our preparation has already begun for Portland. Thanks, coach. Thank you, Dennis. Um, Chris Bills, striker, Chris. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Josh, I wanted to ask a little bit about Danny Pereira and his play um, through the early part of this season. It seems like he's really taken taken a jump even from where we saw him last year. And and also just like when you've got a guy like Johanna Valencia that you brought in to sort of, you know, we, we kind of think play that that position. Uh, you know, how how do you kind of see that playing out? When does when does Johan get his chance to start or, you know, you just kind of ride the hot hand of, of Danny until, you know, until something <laughs> something doesn't look as great. Well, I think we're we're respectful of of these players. Um, we have domestic players that we picked up in the offseason. We we have international players that we've picked up in the offseason. And uh, we have much more quality and competition in our group. And and to Danny's credit, he's he's come in early from preseason. Um, he's been fit. He's been strong. He's showed a, a different responsibility, a, a bit more maturation. And, and those are positives for, for, for Danny. I put him into a good space and he's performed quite well. Um, Johan Valencia, again, is, is, is an experienced player. He's won championships, played in a very physical league um, and, and, and will bring us quality. He already has in the minutes that we've seen and, and he'll get his minutes. And, um, you know, he, he may be starting this weekend. So we'll, we'll continue to give him some of the reps in, in our training sessions and Ruben as well. So uh, we, we, we've got options and we have decisions that we have to make, but everything we do is, is geared with the idea that we're doing what, what's make makes most sense and what's best for the team. Yeah. And we just talked to Ethan and he said he, he kind of hates that super sub title right but you've got a number of those guys the two that you just mentioned him that are experienced players uh how do you feel like the guys are are, are handling that of uh, you know the competition the uh you know obviously you're performing well but competing against each other seeing talking about it before the season is one thing but what's it been like to see it play out i think you see how it's played out i think it's really clear how it's played out i think it's obvious and um you know that's what competition should do and that's um you know what we did lack a little bit last year and we, we've added quality we've added character these are these and also guys that don't play understand that there's a respect to your teammate there this is your brother and you support them when they're starting and and, and in turn when you come off the field and when i watched cc coming off the field last game you know in the 90th minute when we scored our fifth goal he's got the towel ripping around he's, he's he's wanting a sixth goal and he's cheering for his guys and you know ethan scored who's a guy that came in for him but you know that's what you like to see and you know today they're out here they're they're, they're we got, you know, Maxie's working the grill and Felipe's working the grill. They're a family. And, um, you know, that's part of it. And, and again, the support on the field is critical. It is absolutely critical. And uh, we haven't hit any bumps or turbulence yet. So that time will come. But but these experiences and the professionalism and, um, you know, just their humanity is, is, is going to be needed. And, you know, I think that's why we're, we're in a little bit different space than we were last year. Thanks, Chris. Uh, let's go to Michelle Sanchez and then Eric Goodman. Michelle, go ahead. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Ryan. Hello, Coach. Uh, quick Hello. question. Um, I see that Alex Ring, um, I guess he had a loss in his family uh, recently. Will he be traveling this weekend? Yeah, it was unfortunate for, for Alex, and um, we'll work through that internally. And um, you know, we'll, we'll see how things are for Alex, but his, his priorities are, are his priorities. And if, you know, if there's something needed from our side, he, he'll have full support from us. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I just, I know personally how, how hard that a yeah. loss is in a family. Right. Yeah. So, 
Um, also, I mean, I hear y'all having a barbecue and this time around, you kind of get that opportunity, obviously post kind of COVID world. Um, the team looks like they're so united. I mean, I see that they have barbecues and stuff. So can you talk to me about a little bit about the unity within this team that we kind of see? Um, and I think the fans also see there's this type of unity uh, within the team uh, post COVID. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think there's there's the contact points with the with with our fan base, with our supporters, um, just with the community in general. I, I think we have more presence, and and you know, I I think it's it's an important part of being the only professional team in town. It's a responsibility, but it's a responsibility these guys treasure and cherish. You know, Brad Stuver and certainly Diego take a big role in the community, but as do many others. And you know, again, I think that's that's you know, clearly evident within our group, um, inside the locker room, on the training field and, and uh, interactions on and off the field. I think that's, you know, again, a space that was not utilized last year. And I don't think we did anything really as a team until maybe September where we had a dinner out. And, but it was, um, it was challenging. There were lots of challenges last year. Uh, COVID provided some, you know, some things that, uh, you know, I certainly wasn't aware of and, and probably not prepared for, but um, they're in a better space. You know, they, they certainly, um, yeah, good chemistry off the field, good, good camaraderie. But, but again, it's, it's two games into the season. Um, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for these guys to, to enjoy time in our training center and be around each other, but, but they also know there's work. I mean, we, we do our work in the morning, they enjoy themselves and we'll come to work again tomorrow and, and really start locking in on Portland. They're a good team. And, um, there's no joking around when, when we start thinking about who we're playing and the environment that we're going into, because it's, you know, you're going to be met with intensity and, and competition and winners. I mean, this is a good team and uh, we, we got to be ready. Perfect. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Let's go to Eric. Eric, go ahead. Hey, Josh, good to see you. A um, bit of a general big picture question. If you can bear with me for a second. You know, a, a lot of the, you know, so much of your time here in Austin has been about establishing this club's identity, um, the, the way you guys want to play. You know, we heard, you know, kind of after the Miami game, you were talking about them sitting back. You said that, you know, that will never be us sitting in that low block. Um, the way you guys do it, the way, you know, all the things that go into the way you do play, high press, breaking, you know, build, breaking through pressure back to front, maximizing possession. In your opinion, is, is that the optimal way to play the game? You know, just, you know, is, is our other clubs, you know, kind of crazy for not trying to play that way? Just, you know, the way you view kind of the concept of, of, of playing soccer that way. Um, I think there's lots of ways to play the game. And that's the great thing about our league. There's these ways that both, you know, Cincinnati came in with a diamond. Miami came in with a 5-3-2. Um, Portland will be in a tight 4-4-2. I think Seattle's, you know, mixed. They, they've been a 5-4-1, 5-3-2, 5-2-3. You know, now they're back to a 4-2-2. So you get plenty of variety. Um, style of play and identity, I think, are are philosophically what you want to be as a club and what we want to represent as, as a coach and, and certainly with, with Claudio as well, what we want to be known for. Um, we want to have a, you know, an entertaining style of play. We want to score goals and we want to win just like everyone else. We, we want to utilize the ball. We want to have possession. But ultimately, it's it's not about possession. It's about, you know, creating situations to to attack the opponent and and create chances and score goals. And then on the defensive side, being hard to break down, being difficult, being physical, combative, compact. Um, and that's an area we got to continue to work on. You know, I think that's um, we've been tested a little bit in these first two games, but it's, it's going to get much harder before. Um, before it gets easier, we, we, we have a good opponent in Portland who can hurt you and then in, in, in Seattle. So, again, two best teams in the West, clearly, and, you know, certainly two of the best teams in the league in the last four or five years. And then uh, just quick on on Seattle, who just, you know, had a, an impressive yep. win last night in the uh, CONCACAF Champions League. You know, when you watch those matches, you know, does do you put on the MLS shirt and, and root for someone who's even your rival in the regular season over teams from other countries? You know, how do you take in that competition? I mean, I watch it for, you know, from from a learning standpoint, uh, you know, again, to see what one, what Leon's doing, also to see what Seattle's doing. What are they trying to, to achieve as 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 a starting point? We're going to play them quite quickly. So I'm not cheering them on by any means. But, you know, we understand this is MLS and, and I hope this is the year one of our MLS teams wins. You know, it's certainly in a good position. We, we, we put a hurt on a on, on number of the Mexican teams and, and obviously Comunicaciones last night as well. So. Um, that's nice to see. Again, our league is growing. The competitiveness is, is definitely there. And, um, you know, it's, it's nice to compete. And we're, that's only going to continue going into next year as, as well. Thanks. By the way, I think Jorge wants you to uh, manage Leon for the uh, return leg. Put up. Uh, Jorge would never want me to, to manage 
Naomi <laughs> or, or anyone for that matter. <laughs> and uh, on cue, Jorge, I believe you have a question. <laughs> yes, no, actually, actually, I was going to ask Josh if he can help us on the second leg because we need five goals. Yeah, yeah. Seattle's good. Seattle's good. <laughs> okay, no. okay uh, well, besides that, but that's because I, Eric is saying that because I tweet, uh, everybody's calling me uh, a Josh, Josh Wolf's lover now. Yeah. Uh, on Twitter, that's a, that's, that's a that's, big that's a big turn. That's a big shift for you. No, I, 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 you. I, you know what <laughs> I what I say is it's a just, just a journalism. I mean, we criticize when when it has to be, and 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 the team is doing good. And this is the question. Basically, uh, we think as as an Austin uh, we think the team is doing good. I know we have a weak, probably weak uh, uh, real rivals, but why we're not appearing on the on the power ranking i mean why mls and this you know i want to know your thoughts why the mls is not taking austin seriously as as the way we see it what do you think yeah i think you know we have who we have in front of us and we have to go perform you know i think the league is showing a lot of disrespect to cincinnati and and certainly to um, to Miami as well with some of the commentary. It's not easy to come into this space and compete. It's the beginning of the year. You have a new coach. You know, obviously Miami has the issues that they're going through, but um, I'm not minimizing and disrespecting those teams. Uh, we came out and performed. We had a game strategy and and we performed at a good level. And, and again, I think it's, you know, it's it's for us to go out and and, and take our three points and earn our three points. I, I talk a, a real, real um, clearly to the players before the game about earning it. You earn the respect and the trust of your teammates first and foremost, and then you go out and earn the respect of the opponents, the refs, and the league by by putting up good performances and consistency and results. Um, and and then ultimately, it's about getting three points in your game. You got to go out and earn it every single week. There's there's no easy games in this league. So you know whatever happened last year and whatever team you know is in is in good form. What I know in this league and. Um, from experience as a player and a coach is anybody can beat anybody and you, you need to be prepared and, and, and up for it because as soon as you have a plan, you, you better have another plan because things can change quickly. And, um, you know, I got a lot of respect for, for both those teams and their coaches and, you know, the, the narratives and the, and the stories on the side are just that our guys are focused on, on continuing to get better. And we, we got 32 more regular season games, hopefully a number of games in the open cup. Uh, and some friendlies along the way. So we, we, we've got big games, big aspirations, and, and we got to keep, uh, keep, keep getting better. And about, I don't know if somebody asked before, but uh, about your, uh, your name, your name, the coach of the, uh, of the week on the MLS, what are your thoughts? Um, I thank my, my coaching staff and my players for that. You know, that's, that's, that's a group, um, that's a group accomplishment, you know, obviously pleased to be named that, I guess, from, not sure how that gets named, but you know, either way, it's it's because of what what we've done as a group and the work that we put in and prepared and went out and executed against Miami. Thank you, Josh. Good luck. Hey, okay. Chris, do you want to one final question before we close up? Yeah, uh, Josh, you put a lot of emphasis on the um, on transition uh, defense, especially during the preseason. That's obviously something that the Portland thrives on. How confident are you in this team's ability to go play on the front foot and and you know not leave yourself exposed? Uh, on Saturday? It's a great question. It'll be a great test. Um, again, both these teams that we're playing um, are extremely good at that. You know, Portland is, is one of the best in the league when you think of the attacking power that they have with, um, you know, certainly Yimmy Char and Niesgoda, uh, Moreno, you know, Blanco, Espria, the speed, the power, the precision that they have. Um, it's, it's impressive. And, you know, I think that, you know, they are who they are because of that. They, they can compete with anybody. And, you know, they, they were on the verge of, of grinding out a win and another championship last year. So we got to be mindful of that. And then we also got to be ready to play. You, you can't go into these places, whether it's, you know, the likes of Portland, Seattle, Kansas City, some of the best teams. You can't just go there and sit on it. You, you got to go play. You got to perform, put them under pressure, have some, some certainly stress them a bit. But it, we're going to have to be very mindful of, of who they are. They're an extremely good team in transition. Um, and when they have the ball, they can still hurt you by just moving the ball around. And, and, and again, for us, the, the compactness, the combativeness is going to be important. But uh, we also have to find times to play and, and, and to punish them as well. You see a comparison between Johan Valencia and, and Diego Chara. Like, how similar are they, they as players, you think? And, you know, is that something that you kind of talked with Johan at all about, like, I guess just that, that role as a as kind of a destroyer and what that adds to the group? 
I, I think um, Diego Char is the best six in the history of the league. I think he's um, put it in year over year. You know, what he's doing still today is, is quite impressive. So I'm not going to put Johan in that comparison and, and, and heap him with that pressure. Johan's a good player. He's a ball winner. When we looked at the data and we watched the games, you can quickly see Johan's ability to win balls, to sniff out plays, to protect the back line. Um, it's quite clear. And, and, you know, the more he gets settled here and he gets up to speed with what we're doing, he'll do those same things for Austin FC and hopefully for a long time, just as Diego has done for Portland. But, um, you know, again, Diego Char is, is, is in a league of his own. I mean, honestly, he's, he's fantastic player and he's, he's timeless. I mean, ageless. It's amazing what he's doing still to this day.